In our last video, we took a look at the different types of constraints that are out there on an Oracle database. And we said there were five basic constraints. There's primary key, foreign key, not null, unique, and check constraints. We're going to take a little more look at the primary key on a database table right now. And we're going to take a look at the music table that we created earlier. So we have uh, four columns in this particular uh, table, last name, first name, album, and rating. And I came up with some values that uh, we're going to insert into this particular table. Don't have a foreign key defined yet. We went and created a foreign key on the previous um, video for constraints, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create one uh, for this guy again. I, I went ahead and I, I wiped it out, so I started from scratch. You can only have one primary key on a table. It's not like you can have multiple primary keys. So you can only have one primary key on a table. I'm going to select music. I'm going to go to constraints. I'm going to say that I want to go ahead and I want to create a new constraint. There's my primary key. And I'm going to add last name and I'm going to add album. And this is what I'm going to actually execute against this. And if I want to see the DDL against it, you can see how I'm going to alter the table music. And I'm going to add this primary key constraint where I list the different columns that are going to make it up. And then I'm going to obviously enable that primary key as soon as I do it. So I go back into primary key. I have everything selected there. I select OK and there's a new primary key that's created. I have to refresh so that it shows up inside of SQL Developer, but once it does, we have all of that information there. So there's my primary key that's uh, defined. So now if I want to start inserting records into this particular table, I have a couple of constraints. I obviously have these not nulls, and if I try to put that in there, uh, it's going to give me some kind of error message. I have this check constraint between 0 and 10. So let's take a look at how to insert information into a database. And again, I'm not going to get into a lot of the details about this now. I'm going to have another video that's uh, just for inserts. But I want to show all the different constraints that are out there and how it limits the information you're going to put in. So I'm going to go into my worksheet here. And I'm going to erase all of this. And I'm going to write an insert statement. What is it that I actually want to insert? Well, I want to insert Oasis, Null, definitely maybe, and a rating of 9 into my database. So how do I do that? Well, I just say insert into, and I give the table that I'm going to insert into, music. And then I say values, because I want to specify values that I'm going to actually insert. And we know that the order of columns inside my music table is what's going to define my insert statement. So what's the order of columns? My order of columns, let me scroll this back here, and we look at not the data. Come on. There's my column. So it's last name, first name, album, and rating. That's the order of my columns. I can change this around, and I can show you this when I get into the insert video. But for now, I'm just going to keep it simple so that we can uh, do this as quickly as possible. So we have last name, first name, album, and rating. So what's the first thing I want to insert? Well, the last name in this case is going to be Oasis. The next value is going to be null, because Oasis doesn't have a first name, right? We took a look at this and we said Oasis, null. The album is going to be called definitely maybe, and the rating is going to be 9. So I'm going to put in def, whoops, got to put it in quotes, because it's a string, def in it, lee, maybe, and give it a 9. Semicolon terminates my insert string. So I'm going to insert into music, and these are the values. Oasis, null, definitely maybe 9. I click on the Run Script button. And it's saying that my first name cannot have a null inserted into it. So let's take a look back at music and look at my different constraints that I have there. And it looks like I accidentally created my first name as a nullable field. So let's go back in there. I'm going to take a look at each one of these guys and say, you know what? First name can be null. I'm not sure why I got a check mark there. I must have put it there by accident. So once we click on OK, we refresh. And now you can see that first name can be null. So let's go back into my insert statement, run that guy again, thinking about it, thinking about it, one row inserted. Uh, I'm not going to talk about inserts and uh, commits and all of the other things that go along with transactional processing right now. But for now, just remember that you have to commit to actually get that information into your database. So if we go back into music now and we take a look at data and we refresh him, 
there's Oasis, artist name is null, definitely maybe now. I've now inserted information into my database. So let's try to break it. Let's try to insert something. And we did that kind of a second ago where we had a null value, even though first name was uh, defined as a not null field. Oracle didn't let me do it. But let's check our check constraint that we had earlier. Remember we created a check constraint that said rating can only between, be between 0 and 10. So let's try and insert uh, this third uh, record here, the who uh, face dances. And let's give it a rating of like 17 or something like that. So if I go back in here and I try to insert that information, I'm going to insert into music, and instead of Oasis, I'm going to do who, the who, and instead of definitely maybe, I'm going to say face dances, and I'm going to give it a value of 19. If I try to insert that row, it should come back with an error message saying, hey, you violated a check constraint. And you can see right there, check constraint violated. The value being inserted do not satisfy the name check. Do not insert values that violate this constraint. So I tried to put something in that doesn't match those values. So I'm going to go back and say, you know what? I really want to give that a 7 and execute that guy. One row inserted. Again, let's commit it so it's actually in our database. We go back to data. We refresh our information. There it is, the who face dances and uh, rating a 7. So let's do one more. Let's do a truly, truly awful album. If you guys are music fans at all, uh, Lou Reed made this album called Metal Machine Music uh, back in the 70s, and it's truly the most god-awful thing in the history of rock and roll. So I'm <laughs> actually giving that guy a zero. So I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to give it Reed, and instead of a null, Lou. Oops, make sure I close my quotation marks there. Instead of face dances, you'll also notice how SQL Plus changes the color. Uh, when you're inserting things to try and help you to make sure that you don't make errors. So I'm going to call this Metal Machine Music. And again, truly, truly an awful, awful record. So I'm going to insert him. And again, Oracle is going to think about it. One row inserted. going to commit the information. Go back to my table. Take a look at it. There's all my information. Lou Reed, Metal Machine Music, rating is zero. Now remember we set up a primary key. Primary key on artist last name and album. A combination of those two fields have to be unique. If I try to put anything in there that, that has the same thing, even if I have different values for, let's say, first name and rating, it's gonna, it should throw an error message because the primary key uniquely identifies. And this is what I'm saying my criteria is to uniquely identify it. So let's go back here and let's say I want to change something around. I'm going to insert, uh, I'm going to try to insert the same thing, but I'm going to give it a different rating. So it is a unique row, but as far as Oracle is concerned, it, it really isn't unique because read is still the same and middle machine music is still the same. So if I try to execute that guy, it should come back with an error and it says, hey, you've violated this primary key. This matches. You cannot uniquely identify this, this row anymore if I try to insert a, a row with the, these values. Even though this is different, I could change Lou around, that could be different. As long as read and metal machine music match, it's not going to allow me to um, find that information. So primary keys serve the purpose of uniquely identifying a row inside your database. And it also helps Oracle when it comes time to find information. When it goes out there and you say query and find this information for me, if you can specify the columns that you're looking for that match what's inside the Oracle primary key, Oracle can find it a heck of a lot faster. So if you've got millions and millions of rows out there and you have a unique way of identifying them, like read and metal machine music, Oracle can do a really good job at uh, finding all of that information for you very quickly. So this video showed you a little bit about constraints and primary keys and how they work inside your database and how Oracle will automatically limit that information uh, if you try to insert something that violates one of those constraints.